Hello, this is Mark from Spanish Property Insight. In this video, I'm going to look at how long it takes to sell a property in Spain with new data in hand that gives us an idea of how long properties stay on the market in different regions of Spain. It's an important question when you come to sell because most people want to sell as quickly as possible when the decision has been made to sell, always at the best price, of course. But it's also something to think about when you look at buying property in Spain because there may come a day when you need to sell and there are factors which determine, as I'm going to try and explain, how quickly a property sells. And you might want to keep those in mind as you go in, because that's going to have a big impact on the time when it comes to get out. So how am I going to tackle this? First of all, I'm going to look at the de determining factors that are important when the time comes to sell and how long it takes to sell. There's a bunch of factors which I'll go through, which I think are the key things to that determine how long it takes to sell a property in Spain. Secondly, I'm going to look at a boat case study, which I had a personal experience of. I know it's not property, but it does bring together all of these factors in quite an interesting way. Thirdly, I'm going to look at new data for listing times, which has just been published, and discuss how that can help you get an idea of how long it might take to sell a property in Spain. And lastly, I'm going to look at the question as to how long do you want to take if you're a seller and you want to, and you want to, you want to get out, you need to sell. How long do you want to take, and how this data can help you, and how the determining factors and all of these things I'm going to discuss can help you to make that decision. So let's look at the determining factors. First of all, the market cycle. This is critical. I mean, if it's a in a boom time, it's easier to sell a property than in a depression. There's just more buyers around, there's more money around, and you can and the, and the and the market's kind of hotter and things move faster. So if you're trying to sell in a time of increasing sales and optimism, that's much easier than when the market's dead for obvious reasons. Next comes segment liquidity. Depends what you are trying to sell. Some segments are much more liquid than others. For example, a two-bedroom apartment in a big city like Madrid or Barcelona. There's lots of buyers and lots of sellers, and it's a much more liquid market. But if you have a rural property uh, which is difficult to get to and it's got a very niche appeal, that's not a very liquid market. So it's going to be harder to find a buyer and you might have to be more patient. Then, of course, the features of demand. If you have a frontline property with great sea views, that's a strong selling point and you're going to find more demand for that. Whereas even in the same location, uh, back facing, no sea views, less buyers. So the, the, the features, and there's many other features, I'm just using uh, sea views as one, but each property, and that's the thing about property, is such a sort of unique um, it's not like a commodity, it's a, it's a very, every property is unique or quite unique and every property's features have to be taken into account when, when determining how much demand there's going to be. Then of course comes the price, very important, how much you're asking. Even if you've got a very attractive property with all the features that are in demand, if it's overpriced, Nowadays, people can check so quickly with the portals. It's very easy to see if a property is overpriced or not, or, or aggressively priced. And in in most cases, pricing power, especially uh, where you, where you are in the market cycle, pricing power. You have to be very careful about that and what you what kind of price you can ask. And if you're out of the market, if you're overpriced, it's going to take longer to sell. And then, of course, there's presentation. Uh, I've seen amazingly bad presentation, even of nice properties. So there's, um, you know, bad pictures, bad descriptions. And the, this is the sort of marketing skill. If you get nice pictures, there's things called home staging, where people, you get professionals in to clean up the property and give, or give it a lick of paint and put some flowers around and all, you know, remove it, put loose seats down, don't have all the kind of personal... Um, details that people have that just put off potential buyers. There's lots of things you can do to present your property in the best way, and that does have an impact on how fast you can sell. 
So those are the main determining factors as I see them that you that that are critical in how long it takes you to sell a property. Now let's talk about this boat case study I mentioned. So this is a boat that I was given as a wedding present back in 2001 or 2 and it was it cost 25,000 euros new and so I was a very lucky boy. Uh, it was a time when the Spanish economy was booming, the housing market was roaring, everything was hunky-dory. I kept this boat in on a small island called Formentera, which is a beautiful little island, part of the Pitiusas. It's the next one down from Ibiza, but it's a very, it's a very small, small place, and it has a small market for boats. Now, it turns out that although this was a very generous gift, it wasn't quite the right boat for what we needed. And I had a crash course in, in how to manage a boat, how to drive a boat. In Spain, to have a license to drive a boat like this, which is uh, above six meters, I needed something called a patron de embarcaciones de recreo. So I went on a course and learned all the theory and got a few hours of practice. But the reality of driving boats is actually, you know, they're, especially with a big onboard motor like, like this one had, you feel... Um, it's a very, you need a lot of experience. It's, it's quite, it's, I felt quite insecure trying to drive this boat. You're just chucked in at the deep end, as it were, you know, first day in front of the whole family, trying to uh, dock the boat. It was a disaster. I kind of ran up against some rocks and had to jump out of the boat to push it off the rocks. A new mobile phone in my pocket immediately gurgled and died. Um, it, I didn't cover myself in glory. And then uh, it turned out that the boat actually had it, although it was brand new, there was a problem in the motor, I think, in the carburetor, and it kept on cutting out. So there I was with my new wife out on the sea, loads of other big boats around, and we kept on, the engine kept on dying, and then we just would drift, and someone would have to come pick us up and tow us back to port. And this would also happen in port, where I'd lose control of the boat because the motor cut out, and so we were drifting around, knocking into other boats, and it was just mortifying, embarrassing. But it, And it, in it... <laughs> shattered my wife's confidence in me as a captain of course her cousin came along jumped on the boat uh, switched on the motor and it roared to life immediately and then and then uh, when when we went out the engine would die so it looked like it was my fault but actually there was a problem with the motor but this destroyed my wife's confidence in me as a as a captain and also <laughs> somewhat destroyed my own confidence in me so for the next few years we didn't use the boat much and but it cost quite a lot of money to keep a boat and so it just the as the years went by and the cannot the, the the finances didn't really stack up and the time was the time came to decision was made everyone agreed that it was best probably to sell but of course that was by that time the economy had turned down the spain was in a it was after the great financial crisis. Spain was in t deep recession. And I had a boat that cost a lot of money to keep out of the water. And it was in a very small, li illiquid market in Formentera. You know, if I'd had that boat in Barcelona, there would have been... And, and it's, it's a boat that had no... It wasn't particularly special, but it was a good boat. It was in excellent condition. It was barely used. And in a big market like Barcelona or Valencia, or Malaga, one of those markets, there would have been many more potential buyers around, but in Formentera, there were none. So I'd made the decision to sell, and I asked the shop owner what kind of price to ask, and he recommended 13,000 euros, which is less than half, or almost just over half of what it cost new, and it was in excellent condition, almost new. So that I went with his advice, but now l looking back, I would have been better off just to just giving the boat away at that time. Took almost five years to sell. Each year cost about a thousand euros to maintain it. I was trying to sell at the worst time in the, in a depression in a small illiquid market with a boat that was sort of a commodity with no unique sales features, and the asking price was completely wrong. So come 2013, when the economy was starting to show signs of improvement and the housing market had bottomed out, and I decided it was time to sell at any price. And when it comes to boats, you have six months. You sell between January and August. After that, 
people forget about boats and minds turn to other things. It's a bit like second, the second home market as well. The time to sell, the time to find your buyer is in the first six months. So come 2013, I think I had it at, in 2010, I'd already dropped the price down to 10,000 euros. Come January 2013, uh, beginning of January, I dropped the price to 7,999, no interest. In uh, February, I went down to 6,999, no interest. And by April, I went down to 5,9999, almost no interest, a few inquiries. And in May, I dropped to 4999, so just under 5,000 euros, and immediately I swapped with offers. It was amazing. It was incredible to see how all of a sudden you're in the market with the price. And I had it sold in a, in a day or two. So in the end, I sold it for just under 5,000 euros, and it had cost me more than that to maintain since the time to decision to, to sell. So I would have been better off just giving it away. And it took so much time and effort to list it at different boat portals. And, you know, it's just loads and loads of time. And in fact, looking back, what I should have done is when I'd first gone to market in 2009 or whenever it was, I, would have, I should have done more research, got a better idea of pricing, not just taken the advice of the boat shop owner. I should have seen where prices were and gone in really aggressively. So let's say at a 7999 rather than 13,000, it would have been the cheapest price on the market by far, certainly for that boat in that condition. And I, I, I suspect I would have sold quicker because at that time, even though the market then continued going down, there was still a bit of demand, but I just was, went to market with the wrong price. Anyway, so that was what I learned from boats. And I think you can apply the same the same lessons to selling property. So now let's go back to the Spanish housing market and look at the data I mentioned, the new data we have for listing times. So for here, let's go to, and here's the table of the, of the data. So this comes from a property portal called Idealista. So I think is the biggest property portal in Spain. And they published data which shows how long properties on average list for at their website. Now, listing times are not the same as sales times, although Idealista have presented this information as if, as if they are synonymous, they're not. There's lots of reasons why listings go up and down. For example, a, a, an, an agency might be given a mandate to sell a property that other agents have, it lists, and within three days another agent sold that property, and so the listing has to be taken down. So that looked like that listing lasted three days, but in fact, the property might have been on the market for six months with other agents. So that's just one example. And also listings that can, many listings are not updated. And so a property seems to be on the market for a year, but it was actually sold months ago, but it hasn't been updated. So just making the point that listings do not equal sales. But let's, but the list is saying, well, this is a guide to well, how long it takes to sell a a, a property in Spain. However, how long a, a listings stay up on average is a guide to, to sales time. So, so let's just take that at face value and see what we say, see what the sh figures show. So here's the table you see. Here you have the different areas for which they have provided data, and they are capitals and provinces. You can't see them in the table right now, but you will. And then here is so uh, the, uh, the, the top one is the Granada, capital of Granada province, it, and listings that are up for one week or less were 34% of listings. Between one week and one month, 22% of listings. Between one month and three months, 21%. And between, th between three months, one year, 20%. And one year or more listings, 3% uh, of listings were up for a year or more. Using that data, I then calculated how long it takes to sell properties on average in these regions. So 34% of properties are sold in one week, 56% are sold in one month, 70%, 77% are sold in three months, and 97% of properties in the Granada capital are sold within a year, or rather, to be more accurate, 97% of listings are taken down within a year. Now, this turns into a chart, which you can see here, and here you can see Granada capital is the, uh, this is organized by the sold in one week. So this is from Granada Capital, where the highest, biggest number of or proportion of properties sold are, uh, listings are last a week or less. 
down to, at the bottom, Teruel capital, where only 3% of listings are up for a week. Now, what I'm going to do is just filter this capital to this table to capitals because it's just uh, easier to manage. So here you say to see the same same data, but it's just capitals, not provinces. And what you can do here is uh, you can see well. Let's see how um, many properties are sold. How it longs it? At, at how m many properties are sold in a month? So organize the table by sold within a month and say here you see that's one week and that's one month and you get the same same picture it goes changing a little bit and then sold in three months you see still granada capital at the top Jaén, barcelona in barcelona you have 72 percent of properties are sold in three months and sold in a year so we'll organize that by sold in a year. And here you get the kind of like, how many properties around Spain in the capitals are still on the market after one year? And in Granada capital, only 3% of properties, which means 97% have been sold within a year or the listing taken down, going down to Ceuta, bueno, Zamora. These are, are illiquid parts of Spain, should we say. And in... Uh, Teruel capital, for example, 30% of listings are still up after a year. So how could you use this? Well, let's say, let's have a look at Alicante, for example. If you have a property in Alicante, in the, in the capital, or somewhere in the province, of course, that Alicante is home to the Costa, Costa uh, Blanca, you can see that in the province, 85% of properties how of listings have been taken down within a year and let's assume that's the same as sold so 85 percent of properties sold within a year and 50 more than 50 percent are just over 50 percent are sold within three months so if you have a property in alicante and it's not sold within three months then that suggests that your price is wrong and your marketing is wrong because more than 50 percent have already sold in that period of time and you need to rethink your pricing and your presentation. It's even more the case, let's have a look at Barcelona, for example, which is a big, second biggest capital, second biggest city in Spain. Here you can see that 72% of properties have been sold in, in three months and almost, and 95% in a year. And so if you're not sold, if you haven't, uh, you know, three months is a reasonable time to get a, to to sell a property I think anything longer than that and it's, it's getting dragged out so if you haven't got your property in Barcelona sold within three months then you're just that 30 percent who for whatever reasons and maybe you should go back and look at the, the the mix of of the determining factors you're not selling whilst others are and I think it's just to finish off Madrid obviously the biggest biggest um City in Spain, similar story to Barcelona. Seventy percent sold in the first in within three months, and uh, ninety-five percent within a year. So if you're not selling in that time, then you're getting something wrong. Anyway, thank you for watching. That's all for now. I hope it was interesting, and until next time.